It was about 16 years ago when, uh, I remember one person, I remember Gail from the other one, him and his wife. So that was, we used to meet across from Sears, and I kind of lost track of everything. But uh, praise the Lord, it's good to see you folks and be, be with you folks again. Amen. 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 Glory. Thank you, I'm afraid he's going to do this. <laughs> uh, my name is Richard Hampton, and I'm here from Riverside. I attend Life Spring Assembly of God Church here in Riverside. And uh, upon the invitation of my brother-in-law, Mike Gallagher and Mary, uh, they invited me over the Christmas season, or maybe Thanksgiving, to let him attend one of the services. and. So I just made it a point that it might seem like a good night. And uh, Tom here is my brother's son. And so naturally I've known Mike since we were <laughs> 15 or something. But I've already enjoyed the atmosphere here. Nice meeting new people. And uh, I'm sure I'll be back. <laughs> This is our speaker. But the girl's daughter, her name is Abba. You know, I, I thought about Daddy, but then I thought about the, the rock group, too. Uh, let's... Hello, everyone. I'm Abba. I'm really glad to be here to support my dad. And I like to travel with him and pray for him when he's speaking. So it's very nice to meet all the guys. Thank you. We have some uh, information on the on the tables, and there um, there's two there's a Christian the Christian Business Professional Directory, and there's the booklets themselves with all the ads in it, but then there's a sheet of paper on there that uh, gives you the opportunity if you have a business or a ministry, uh, they're reasonable and. They they will uh, they'll, they'll put your uh, name and all your information in there. Uh, our chapter is in there. It's on page fourteen. And if you uh, like this gentleman here, the pastor he has a business, and it's in restoring. Uh, you get parts for old classic cars. Is that right? Yeah. And so, if you need a part for old classic cars, he has it. Now, if you just need a part. We have a man over here, <laughs> and he's got a junkyard. So he can provide you with any kind of part you need. I don't know if he has little cars or not, but so we got the, the kind of the same thing. We'll let uh, John talk. John talk. Hmm. Uh, not right this much. Okay. Uh, help Mary out here? Yes. You want me to do that? Yeah. Sure. Right. John, That's right. Now, this is my chaplain. And if you look at my business cards, if you look at my business cards, uh, John and I are the same business card. Yes. So, uh, you talk to one of us, we'll tell you the same thing. Uh, good evening. Uh, Harry. Had has these uh, that were gift sets, I guess, at the advance. Advance, men and ladies advance. Men and ladies advance up in Fresno, California. This, well, let me back up. Harry feeds needy families three times a year: Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And I support Harry. And for a twenty-dollar donation, you can have this set. Uh, for a $20 donation to his ministry to feed the people, uh, the needy people at Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And I support him every year, so please support him. Okay, I'm going to pass this around so that everybody can look at it. Well, Full Gospel is uh, a new new fellowship for me. Well, it's not new. I've been here 
what, five years, five, six years? Um, but, you know, it's a new set of Christian friends that I have. Uh, I met a lot of people. Uh, I spoke at a number of full gospel meetings, my wife and myself. And full gospel has really been a blessing. Uh, i got to say that full gospel has helped my wife, with the help of God, quit smoking. Four years ago, uh, she was asking everybody to pray for her to help her quit smoking, but she still smoked. She didn't smoke in the house or the car, but she went out on the back porch or front porch and smoked. And, yeah, and she smoked and said, God help me. And uh, finally, God said, okay, girl, you want to breathe or you want to smoke? She came down with emphysema, asthma, and uh, COPD, with all the stuff. So God made her have her made that decision, and I'm glad she made it, and my lovely bride. Amen. All right. So, what else was good us? Alright. Gail here is my vice president, who's one of them anyway. He's also the, the secretary. And since uh since uh, I've lived with him, I've actually been able to put him to work. So <laughs> he had a couple of bills I needed to get paid and he actually just took care of it. Actually one of the bills I paid was for this Christian business director guy. Um when the if you're interested, I have some other cards. It's like three or four days before they start publishing. Mm -hmm. So you have a small window uh, to do that. And we really uh, check them out. At least call them, get a price. And, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Right. You know, but at least check it out. It's beautiful, by the way. Uh, Uh, Mike, would you like to pray for our offering tonight? Sure. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this meeting tonight, and I want to thank you for the blessing you give to us. We pray for this offering for blessing, and for the people that give blessing to you, Lord. We give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our special singer tonight is Donna. So, Donna. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you wanna if you can just put the CDs in and you just wanna go a cappella or do you need the mic? Because the mics aren't that good. I don't need the mic. I've got a loud enough voice, it doesn't matter. Okay, there you go. So, so I'll be careful. Hey, ladies are welcome to come enjoy.
chopped off. And, uh, but the Lord not only saved his head, but it saved his whole body and mostly saved his life. Amen. And so now he's got a, a beautiful daughter who, and he's got a beautiful family and he's got a beautiful ministry. And uh, at this point, let's give a hand for Dr. Appleton. Oh. We're glad to have you, Dr. Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, no, no. I want you to do it very well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm really excited to be here. If you haven't seen the miracle of God, life standing before you is a miracle of God. Amen. 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 Uh, the, the story is so long, but usually I have a song that I want to help you to sing. Oh, I want you to help me sing just the chorus. <coughs> this is my story. This is my song. different. 
And the story is that while we were in the depths of darkness, Jesus stretched forth his hand into those darkness and lifted us up to his marvelous light. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so we all have the same story. My story begins in Ghana, West Africa, where I'm from. After the pre-university education, I had a, a Fulbright uh, scholarship from the U.S. government when I completed the university in Ghana to come here and study for a PhD. Now, at the time, I didn't have any relationship with God. I, I only thought that those who go to church are usually those who are not doing well. <laughs> if you're doing well, why do, why do you go to church? <laughs> and um, so, upon complexion of my PhD, I returned to Ghana and was appointed uh, an assistant professor at the university. All this time, I did not know Christ. After teaching at the university for about a year or so, I decided to have a little more fun in my life. So I ran for office as a member of parliament, the equivalent of your congressman. And I got elected on the post. When I got elected, uh, the president one day calls me and says, well, I would want you to be the chairman for the Parliamentary Committee on Presidential Affairs and Information. So he did. And uh, I became the chairman of that committee. Now, all the time, life was good. I did not know Christ because I didn't need no Christ. Life was going on well. And so I had traveled to the president uh, to India at the invitation of the late uh, Mrs. Gandhi. From there, we continued to Switzerland. Uh, to renegotiate our creditor loans and so forth. When we returned to Ghana, every year on the 31st, 30th or 31st, the president will host a reception for members of the diplomatic corps and senior government officials at his residence we call the castle, which is the equivalent of your White House here. And so we were at this party when word came out that the government of Ghana was being overthrown by a military coup d'etat. And so by 30, 45 minutes later, an announcement came on the radio and television that the government has been overthrown, the constitution has been suspended, the president has been removed, and all members of the government ought to report to the nearest police station for their own safety. Now, those of you familiar with the political history of that part of uh, the world know that uh, occasionally there were things like that. In the previous coup d'etat, the three former heads of states had been executed by a firing squad. Several members of the government had been listed as missing in action. So it was in such a situation that I found myself. Well, there are some times in your life when everybody wants you. When things are going well for you, 
everybody wants to be your friend. But when things are not going well, sometimes it's difficult to have people come to you. Well, when the information came on the radio that all members of the government should report the nearest police station for their own safety, I decided to take a refuge at a friend's home for a while. About three, four days later, the news came on the radio that some members of the government hadn't reported to the, to the police station as was ordered. And it is very eerie hearing your own name on a national radio asking for your whereabouts because you haven't reported. Now, my friend with whom I was staying could not say, Apianda, get out in the streets and uh, get arrested by the police. On the other hand, he couldn't say, stay in this house and let the soldiers come and mess up me and my family. And I could see my friend was in a dilemma. And so I offered that uh, I would rather report to the police station. When I reported to the police, the next moment I was in a political detention. And uh, it's a, a nice way of saying you were in prison. But uh, a number of us, all of us in the government, those who didn't run away, uh, were rounded up and were all sent to the uh, political detention. At the, at the, at the political detention where we were, we were not allowed any contact with the outside world. We were not allowed to read any newspapers. We didn't know what was happening. And since in the previous coup d'etat, three former heads of state have been executed, and several members of the government have been listed as missing, we didn't know what was going to happen. But in my cell, there was a Gideon Place Bible in the cell. Now, I wasn't going to read the Bible to get saved because I didn't know what being saved was in the first place. But I didn't have anything to do. <laughs> Anybody who has been in prison or political detention will tell you, you have so much time on your hands. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. So I will take the Bible and read portions of it and put it down and then take it again. And one day I picked up the Bible, I was reading and I stumbled upon the book of Acts where Paul and Silas were in prison and they prayed and the prison walls came down. Well, when I read that, I was really excited because the situation I was in seemed to be like that of Paul and Silas. And they prayed and the prison walls broke down. Wow, so I got excited. And so I started reading. And the more I read, the more I got to know that, oh, all that I needed to do was to confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart. And I got saved. And I said, wow, if I did this, I'll probably get freed like Paul and Silas did. And so in the corner of the stinking prison cell that I was, I decided to give my life to Christ. Hallelujah. And I did. When it is said that the Bible is good news, for me, that was good news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because since I didn't know what was going to happen, and if I had read that Paul and Silas were in prison and they got out, for me, that was good news. Hallelujah. Well, after about, meanwhile, I had been in prison 
for about uh, four to five months. When I gave my life to Christ, about uh, three, four days later, the government decided to try us on, uh, at the military tribunal. And the military tribunal is like a court composed of by soldiers and they will try you for about 30 minutes, one hour, and sentence you to about 30 years in prison. And so, when they started, as chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Presidential Affairs, I was one of the early people that they picked up to face the tribunal. When I went to the tribunal, after a series of questions, the, the chairman asked me, well, what would you do if we release you? Now, when I received Christ in the prison, I also made a promise that for the rest of my life, I would devote it to his service. And so when the chairman asked me, I said, well, for all that God has done for me, if I ever get released, I will devote my life to his service. Amen. Now, this was a national event where there were several people who had come to listen to those who had been arrested and were being tried, and the whole place, they all burst out laughing. Because they couldn't understand how just being in prison for about three, four years, uh, four months uh, could change me like that. But they had uh, underestimated the power of the Christ that I had found. So after the laughter had died down, the chairman asked me, Well, Dr. Arthur, did you say that you were going to be a reverend minister? I said, sir, I did not say I was going to be a reverend minister. I said I would devote my life to his service. If he so desires to make me a reverend minister, that would be okay. And so I was asked to go out of the, to the green room and wait for my sentence. Somehow I was so happy. I felt joy that I have told them my peace of mind. So after about an hour, I was called back to go listen, hear my uh, judgment, what they had decided with me. When I went, the chairman looks at me and says, well, Dr. Arthur, the committee, sitting in full session, has examined all the records before it and have decided that you may be set free. <coughs> Jesus is still in the business of setting people who are in bondage free. Amen. He did it. God did it in the time of Paul. He did it in time of Joseph. He did it in time. He's still in that business. So if you're here tonight and you are in bondage of any kind, Jesus will still set you free. Now, so when I got released, I went home and then decided to see what I could do with myself. I had, I had made a promise to God. And so, I, uh, I, those days I thought that to do God's work, he needed lots of academic degrees. Because that, that was the culture I was coming from. I didn't know that anybody could do that. I needed to go to seminary. And so I wrote to a number of seminaries and the Fuller Theological Seminary here in Pasadena wrote to me. And they said, well, we wonder if it is not God who has put you in the picture at the sky. Mm -hmm. And so they arranged for me, and I came to Fuller. 
to do an MTF. When I came in about uh, about two or three months, the dean calls me and said, "Well, uh, Dr. Arthur, we really think you don't need another degree. What you need is a good grounding in the word." And so we've set up uh, a committee for you of professors who will take you through as on a postdoctoral program, but you don't really need another degree. Meanwhile, uh, we would want you to start a program for us in Christian communication through the arts. Of course, my PhD is in anthropology and ethnomusicology, and so that is the area that I have specialized in. Now, but the interesting thing is this. Here is a guy who had received Christ in about six months at this time, and had been asked to teach at a seminary. How could I teach when I didn't know the word? So what I will do is that I will, when we go to classes, I will put the principles on the board and ask the students who are usually uh, pastors and missionaries to go and write based on the principles we have discussed and then bring the papers back. So when they bring the papers back, I'll collect the papers, take them home, and study them. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how, that's how I was studying. Well, after about two years later, after about two years later, <coughs> One day the dean calls me and said, well, Dr. Arthur, Charles Coulson is going to be in town and would like to meet you. Well, Charles Coulson was uh, Nixon's uh, special aide during the Watergate. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I have been sharing testimony in these areas uh, and somebody had gone to tell him of, of an African who went through certain processes like his, and so he would like to meet with me. So he came to Pasadena, we sat there, talked a little bit, and he asked if, at the time, Prison Fellowship International had just been started. And so he was asking, he asked if I would be interested in going back to Africa and start Prison Fellowship in Africa. So I agreed and I was posted to Nairobi as the African Director for Prison Fellowship International. Now, when God calls us, He equips us. Amen. Yeah. And sometimes the equipping process begins long before the call is made. And when the call has been made, you look back into your past life and you realize that Every little detail of that past life is part of the preparation. Here I was leading prison fellowship in Africa, where I was meeting, meeting with prisoners, meeting with government officials, and asking them to allow the church to go into the prisons. Now, God knew this was what I'll be doing. So, one, he offered me the opportunity first to have experience in government. So when I meet government officials, I will know how to navigate my way around. I will share my testimony with them, tell them, look, I've been in government before. And then when I go to minister to the prisoners, sometimes they, after speaking, they thought I did not understand their situation. And then I'll tell them, I have been where you have been. So God knew I was going to do all this. So one way or the other, he equipped me. And so that's why I'm saying that when he calls us, he equips us. Amen. Whatever your past is, whatever you've been doing in the past, it is part of the preparation. So I was in prison fellowship, started ministries, in about 20 African countries. When I was in a conference in the Philippines, a gentleman, uh, a 
after I had given the paper, came up that he wanted to talk with me. So we went for breakfast, and um, he asked if I would be interested in joining his organization, his ministry, as vice president. I asked, uh, what organization is that? He says it's called International Students Incorporated. And it's an organization here in the U.S. where they, they go from uh, campus to campus trying to reach the international students. Because what happens actually is that when these students are here in this country, the church doesn't reach them. When they graduate and they go back to their countries, then we send missionaries to go there and reach them. But by that time, they'll be holding some positions, they wouldn't really need you. And so we agreed. So I moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado, as vice president for international students. I was there for a while when uh, another ministry called Cook Communications Ministries, they will soon see Cook. They do all the Sunday school materials for about three quarters of the churches in the U.S. Well, uh, they contacted me and uh, I joined them as the international director uh, where I traveled globally uh, to uh, give some information about what it is that we do. But God had scheduled all these things. Now for some time, we find that there is a whole lot of people who are coming to the Lord. But when they come, they are not really grounded in the world because there is virtually no discipleship that takes place. So I was coming from a conference in Guyana, in the Caribbean, in Miami airport, where the Lord clearly spoke to me to organize a conference, a global conference on discipleship. And so I came back and told the president, he said, well, at the end of you are not Billy Graham. I said, sir, me and Billy Graham, we serve the same God. And so if he can use Billy Graham to do a conference, I guess he can also use me. Anyway, the long and short was that in 1999, I called the first international conference uh, on the consultation on discipleship, which was attended by key pastors, um, politicians, uh, businessmen, and so forth. And I had 500 leaders come from 55 countries you know, to England where we had uh, that consultation. Uh, since then, the Lord had used me in various ways. Uh, the last, uh, once, last one I held was as an executive pastor of a uh, uh, 3,000 member church in uh, Atlanta. Uh, that was the last position I've held. Well, I have now moved uh, to uh, uh, Los Angeles, where, but, but when, when I was in Ghana, those days, uh, the full gospel in Ghana and Nigeria, in Africa generally, is, is different from what I see here. Every Saturday morning, you will find hundreds hundreds of us together with a band, a Christian band. We go and uh, eat and dance and share the testimony. And so I've been sharing this testimony in various African countries. And so when I came here, I said, well, I know uh, Demon Chakarian started this, the thing in, in Los Angeles in the area. And I wonder if there is a full gospel businessman around. So I got, I got on, on the web and then found Ken. 
<laughs> and so I, uh, I called him and I said, well, I, I'm, I've, I've come into the area. I would like to share my testimony. Well, we talk and so that's how we got and I got here. But the point I want to make for you tonight is that the God we serve is a mighty God. Amen. It's a big, big God. Yeah. I mean, whatever he, he will do, he is what he has been. He is not in the process of changing. And so, if there is anybody here who is thinking, well, should I or should I not, I would ask that you give your life to Christ because there is so much that he can do for you. Now, for me, I didn't only become a member of parliament for a small district in Ghana. My district became the whole world. I had ministries in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Indonesia, in England, in Italy, in, in uh, various countries. I've traveled throughout about 40 African countries in you know, sharing the world. And so God has so much in store for us. And so this is the this is the story that God has given me that I've been sharing. May God bless you all. Amen. Is this better? Is this all right? Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. And uh, Lord, this. Ask that you bless his yes, ministry, Lord. Lord. That you ask, bless yes, him, Lord. bless his family, Lord. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that and we expect, knowing that you, as much as you've done for him, you've got so much more for him. Yes. yes. And Lord, as, as as he has blessed us tonight, as he has blessed those on the internet, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you bless him in return, and just give him such great and powerful love. Power and ministry. In your holy name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Here's the scenario. You hear the siren. An announcement takes place in heaven. There has been a robbery. Angels are dispatched. The reply comes back. We caught him. And taken back to the Lord. The Lord says, you've done a twofold robbery. You ask, wherein have I robbed you? The Lord replies. For more about this exciting book, please go to theorygiftbasket.com or Amazon.
When Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church, he wasn't talking about Peter, but the revelation that was given to him by the Holy Spirit. The church is a people, a gathering of two or three, with Jesus the Christ of God in the midst of those seeking his way, truth, and life. This is a far cry from these things that look more like a whorehouse, tempting their wares with their painted up faces, trying to get as many would be to enter their doors and into their pockets. God is the God of love, mercy, and grace, not that the man that flesh man is placed on his underlings. I wrote a 252-page book called The Two Trees Within. I'm glad to send you a free copy, or you can download it at www.themanwithin1.com.